Tech family, it is an exciting day. With me is the new Dell XPS 9310 with Intel's brand new 11th generation Tiger Lake processor, which is part of their Evo platform. I have worked my ass off to run some fairly extensive tests on this laptop and get you the results as quickly as possible. This video is all about the performance of Tiger Lake. I do plan to do another video which will be more of a traditional review of this laptop. By the way, I'm Josh and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. If at the end of this video you like what you watched, make sure to smash that subscribe button, click the thumbs up and the notification bell. It shows your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these. This laptop has the i7-1165G7 4-core 8-thread processor with 16GB of RAM running at a very fast 4267MHz in what I think is dual channel. Although Windows is reporting using 8 slots, I was able to verify it as dual channel mode using hardware info. This laptop also has a 512GB NVMe me drive and the greater than 4K display. Now, performance of a laptop processor is heavily determined by the laptop's design. How much power does it provide to the CPU and for how long can it sustain that power given thermal limitations? So, as you look at these results, I urge you to consider that other laptops may perform substantially different with the same processor. I do have several other Tiger Lake laptops coming in, which I'll cover in future. However, I do think we can fairly assess how much better the 11th gen processor is over the older 10th gen as I can compare this laptop to my Dell XPS 9300 from earlier in the year. That is basically the same laptop but with the older i7-1065G7 processor and of course the slower RAM that supported it. Both XPS laptops have pretty much the identical chassis and I would presume the same thermal performance. So this should be a good apples to apples comparison for you. By the way, in the B-roll, my 10th gen XPS is the white model and my newer 11th gen is the silver and black model. I found the white model's chassis show dirt way too easily. I will also compare this laptop's performance to plenty of other laptops including those with AMD processors and dedicated Nvidia graphics. Anyway. Intel is marketing some pretty impressive performance results and an amazing leap forward in graphics power. Let's see if that turned out for them. All performance tests were run on the latest version of Windows with the latest BIOS and drivers from Dell. Dell does have a couple of performance modes that you can select from in their Power Manager app. I focus my testing on the default optimized mode and ultra performance. Let's start with Geekbench. Take a breath as the results in this test are mighty impressive. Over 30% faster in single core than the prior 10th generation and 35% faster than the single core results from my IdeaPad 514 with its AMD Ryzen 4700U CPU. Single core performance is much better than even the 10th gen H series processors in the larger Dell XPS 15 inch and 17 inch laptops. Multi-core is also very good, 17% faster than last year's 10th generation and getting much closer to the 8 core AMD Ryzen 4700U processor. But before you start salivating, keep watching, as Geekbench does not max out the CPU and therefore isn't as affected by thermal constraints in most modern small laptops like this one. Let's take a look at Cinebench R20, which does max out the CPU. Hang on a sec, what is happening here? This new 11th generation processor in this laptop actually performs worse in multi-core than last year's 10th generation. Guys, I promise you, I ran these tests so many times and every time it was around the same result. Let's investigate and see what's going on. When I looked carefully at what was happening during Cinebench R20, I could see that initially the CPU drew a mind-blowing 45 watts of power, but in less than 10 seconds it hit 100 degrees Celsius and the laptop reduced power to the processor to cool it down, gradually dropping all the way to 15 watts for most of the tests. This keeps the processor from melting itself, but of course massively slows down the performance, with the cores dropping from running at around 3.8 GHz to 2.2. By the way, I noticed the same behavior on the two performance modes I tested. Since the laptop can draw so much power, I was worried that the 45 watt charger it came with may not be providing enough power, so I tried a 65 watt Lenovo one, but I got the same poor Cinebench results. Now, if you are wondering what the surface temperatures are like on this laptop while it's being pushed, it's still very warm like the previous Dell XPS. The keyboard deck temperatures are a little cooler, but still quite toasty. However, the underside of the laptop gets just as hot. This laptop scored my record for the highest temperature I've ever measured on the underside of a laptop at 47.6 degrees Celsius. Very uncomfortable. I will say this qualitatively. I have found that this laptop runs very quietly on all performance modes. Perhaps Dell has a little tuning to do here and could run the fan a bit more on ultra performance. 
By the way, if you want to see my single core Cinebench R20 results, here they are on screen. It's a good step up from the average results in Notebook Chat's database for the 10th gen model. Let's get into real world application performance. Starting the laptop and opening a Word document were amongst the fastest results I've seen. Same with coding tasks like starting the integrated development environment IntelliJ and compiling and debugging code. That being said, this laptop didn't perform that much better than recent budget laptops I've tested with AMD's Ryzen 4000 processors. The only exception to this is reloading a large MySQL database, which is a mostly single-threaded task. As we established, Tiger Lake performs very well in single-threaded tasks, and it shows here with this processor being a good amount faster than its competitors, but not better than last year's model. By the way, I did try to undervolt the laptop, but Throttle Stop was completely disabled for undervolting on this processor. I even tried their latest beta, but the same thing happened. Okay, let's see how the graphics performed as that's an area Intel is claiming substantial improvements. Here are my Fire Strike scores and they are very good. It's 46% faster than last year's model and way faster than AMD's Ryzen 4000 series. It is almost as fast as the Asus ZenBook 14 which is a bigger laptop with a dedicated MX350 Nvidia graphics. Here are my Time Spy scores as well much faster than my Envy with the AMD 4500U processor. Now, one thing I want to show you that is interesting is if we double click on the Firestrike scores, you'll see that compared to last year's 10th gen model, the 11th gen has substantially slower physics, i.e. CPU performance. My hypothesis here is that Intel is doing something similar to what Razer does in their laptops, where because of thermals, they lower the CPU's performance in games to allow the GPU to perform better and use up more of the thermal headroom. So how does this play out in real-world application? I was excited to try Premiere Pro to edit a video as I saw a huge improvement from my Asus ZenBook 14 due to its inclusion of Nvidia's dedicated MX350 graphics. Since this has graphics that are almost as powerful, it should perform similar, right? It does not. Although scrubbing through a 4K timeline was quite good, I was shocked to see that when exporting the video, this laptop performed worse than last year's model. I was so shocked that I checked Intel's website for a newer driver than the one available from Dell. There was one, so I retried all my graphics tests with it. Same result. Let's hope the problem here is that Premiere Pro is not fully taking advantage of Tiger Lake yet and will in the future. Anyway, let's play some games. I tested all on Dell's Ultra Performance mode. Please note that because this display has a 16x10 vertical aspect ratio rather than the normal 16x9, its native resolution is 3840x2400 pixels, i.e. greater than 4K. I played at a quarter resolution so everything looked right and things weren't stretched, which is 1920x1200. Normally you'd see gaming resolutions lower at 1920x1080. This means that this computer in games is doing more rendering to push more pixels, which is more taxing. So expect to get results a little better than I did if playing off a Tiger Lake laptop with a more common 1920x1080 screen. In the well-known esports title League of Legends, the game was playable at all settings, including very high, with frame rates mostly above 60 FPS. I still found it best to play on medium, as even though I got above 100 FPS in quiet parts of the game, in big team fights my frames would drop a lot, even a little below 60. Overall though, League was a very good playable experience. Now let's step it up a notch and try a AAA game from a couple of years ago, Battlefield 1. From the moment I tried to launch the game, the whole system slowed down. I don't know if you can see my frame rate in the top corner of the screen, but it's always in red, which is bad. I was rarely able to get a frame rate above 15 FPS on even the lower settings at 1920 by 1200 resolution. As I wasn't expecting the laptop to perform as badly in Battlefield 1, I had already downloaded an even more taxing game, Borderlands 3. Even on very low settings, it was completely unplayable, with frame rates ranging from 20 FPS to 6 FPS in gunfire. Alright, let's wrap up. Intel's marketing seems to be implying a revolutionary step forward with Tiger Lake. I am not seeing it. This release is not the generational leap forward we saw from AMD when they launched their 4000 series processors. It's more of an evolution. Yes, single threaded results are much better and many common applications are predominantly single threaded. However, I believe that more and more applications are being optimized to take advantage of more cores and threads. And in that space, this laptop underperforms and does not improve on its predecessor. In fact, I was disappointed to see that the processor seems to run just as hot and chew just as much power as in prior years. When it comes to the graphics, yes, there is a good step forward. However, it is not enough to step you up a level in the kind of games that you can run on it. You will still need much more powerful, dedicated graphics to play any sort of AAA games, even those from a couple of years ago. Look, 
I certainly hope that there will be performance tuning that applications do to take better advantage of Tiger Lake. And as mentioned earlier in this video, it may perform better in other laptops with better cooling. However, I do feel I fairly did an apples to apples comparison with the same XPS laptop from Intel's 10th gen, and the differences were underwhelming. I really was hoping to see a more efficient processor from Intel when it came to power to performance. Overall, if you can buy the same laptop with Intel's 10th gen processor from earlier in this year and save at least say 200 US dollars, then I'd probably consider that option. There just isn't enough here. And even better, I'd still strongly consider an AMD processor until we see real gains from applications like Premiere on this processor. Well, I hope me rushing out this video helped you. If you liked it, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up and the notification bell. I would certainly appreciate it. Until next time, I will catch you later.